I am a rhinoceros. Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Row. And today we're out on a lovely winter's walk in the sunshine and we're keeping an eye out for sycamore trees or that's Acer pseudoplatinus if you want to get scientific. And um, in this video, we're going to share with you how to recognize sycamore in winter time when their leaves aren't on. We're going to be using the SOBS acronym, um, which I explain more about in my introduction to winter tree ID video. I'll pop the link in the description below. But basically, SOBS stands for silhouette, outer bark, buds and twigs, and site and habitat. Do keep tuned to the end because we'll talk a little bit at the end about uses and properties of sycamore which might be handy for your forest school programs. So firstly, thinking about the silhouette, sycamore tends to be naturally a single stemmed tree. However, if it had been coppiced in the past or perhaps grazing animals might have nibbled off the terminal buds when it's young, you can find it multi-stemmed. So like this one here has got several trunks to it. If allowed to grow to maturity, it grows to be a very tall tree and its crown is broad, far reaching and rounded. The branches themselves tend to have like an upward motion. So they kind of curl upwards at the end if they've got enough light and, al and allowed to do that. Sycamore also has an opposite branching pattern. And sometimes you can actually see that on the ends of the twigs where they come out in opposite pairs. Sycamore is also a species that might have epicormic growth coming out of the trunk. Um, epicormic growth is caused by a pest or a pathogen trying to get into the cells of the tree and the tree reacts by sending out lots of shoots. So it's like this big bushy crop of shoots that either come out of the main trunk or sometimes out of the stems themselves. Then thinking about the bark, in young trees, the bark tends to be very smooth and ranges in colour from brown to greyish. As the tree gets older, it starts to shed that bark and the bark sheds in plates, which this tree is starting to do here. The colour of the bark in older trees tends to be a greyish colour um, and sometimes under the plates that are shedding, it can be more pinky, orangey colour. Um, Sometimes though, there's things growing on the trunks of trees like this one. And you can see that the trunk looks very greenish, um, but that's not actually the bark color. That's because it's got lots of things living on it. So we've got some lichens and some algae and some mosses and liverworts and things like that growing on it. And so that can make the bark look green. So a little tip when you are looking at bark color is to try and maybe find a patch that you can kind of get down to the actual bark itself rather than what's growing on top of it. Also, when you're looking at the bark of sycamore, you can sometimes see scars where the old branches have come off of the tree, where they've been shaded out and they've naturally died back. And you can see again that opposite branching pattern as you go up the trunk. Another thing you might find on particularly young sycamores is a lot of squirrel damage to the bark where they've been chewing off and eating strips of bark, basically taking off the outer bark with their teeth. Um, sycamore being a maple has quite sugary sweet sap and so I've noticed it is a particular favourite of squirrels. So sometimes you see a lot of damage to the outer bark. So now let's take a look at the buds and twigs, which is the most reliable ID feature for winter trees. So sycamore is an acer, which is a maple, and all maples are opposite in their branching pattern. Um, so as well as being opposite, they also are decussets, which means an opposite pair comes out. And then as you go down the twig, if you look at the next pair, they've turned 90 degrees when they come out in their opposite pair. And again, the next one will turn 90 degrees and come out in an opposite pair. So if you were to look from above, it would look like a cross, which is why it's called decusset, cross-like. Um, the bud colour on sycamore is green and that can range from quite a bright apple green through to a darker shade. And the terminal bud in particular is quite large, whereas the lateral buds can be much smaller. 
if you take a look at the bud scales, they are large and smooth. And although they're predominantly green, if you look at the tips of them, they can be sometimes a purplish brown colour. And sometimes you can even see a tiny fringe of white hairs on the tips. But generally speaking, the bud is smooth. The twigs themselves on sycamore tend to be a browny grey colour and they tend to be quite stocky, quite chunky in, in size. They're not necessarily a slender twig. They, they've got some meat to them. And the leaf scars are very obvious in sycamore. So if you look at the lateral buds on the side, you will see like a big horseshoe scar, which is where last season's leaf has fallen off. Sometimes on the big ones, you can even see little corky dots, which is where the vessels carrying the waters and the sugars have been plugged by like a corky substance which is what causes the leaf to fall off so sometimes on the big ones you can even see those little dots so finally thinking about site or habitat so sycamore grows pretty much anywhere it's not fussy it can cope with most soil types and um, happy in most environments um, you might find it within a woodland situation or you might find it in hedgerows. You might find it as a single tree as well. Um, so it can crop up in pretty much anywhere. Another little tip to give you more ID clues is to look down on the ground and see if there's anything on the ground that the tree might have dropped. So you might find last year's leaves on the ground or you might find fruits or seeds of the tree. So if we look down here and reach down, we can find the remnants of the helicopters, which in Sycamore, their helicopter seeds uh, are in a pair and they usually the pairs at 90 degrees which is different to some of the other maples but when they're um you know partially rotted and been eaten by the mice and things uh you tend to usually only find them one they've usually lost their buddy so you usually find only one on the ground at once in terms of confusables that you might mix up sycamore with um, there are a couple that I can think of. Um, firstly, if you were to just look at the bark of a mature tree where it's shedding in plates, that could be confused with a plane tree, like a London plane tree, um, because they also do that. However, plane trees don't have an opposite branching pattern, they're alternate, so that's quite a clear difference between that and sycamore. In fact, the Latin name for sycamore Acer pseudoplatinus. The pseudoplatinus means fake plane, um, so that's uh, something to look out for. Then there are the other maples that you might confuse it for, and the most common one to muddle it up with would be the Norway maple. Um, Norway maple isn't native to the UK either, and it's not so widely naturalised as sycamore, so it's rarer out there. You wouldn't see it very often, but you might come across it in parks or gardens, and it is locally naturalised in some areas. The main difference between sycamore and Norway maple is Norway maple has got deep red or brownish buds rather than the green buds but it does have twigs that look very similar to sycamore they're kind of stocky and a similar color of bark on the twigs um, norway maple also the bark on larger trunks becomes shallowly fissured rather than shedding in plates so that's another key difference also when sycamore's young potentially you could muddle it up with field maple um, which is our native maple in the UK. Um, field maple often is seen as a shrub. It, it rarely gets to be a big tree. So this would only be confusable with younger sycamores. Um, but field maple has much smaller and browny, darker coloured buds, still in opposite pairs because it's a maple. And the bark, even of younger field maples, starts to fissure shallowly um, much sooner than sycamore does. Sycamore tends to stay smooth for a long time until it starts shedding in plates. Um, field maple bark is also more browny coloured as well. Then thinking about the conservation and the wildlife value of sycamore, it's considered not native to the UK, although there is some debate about that because apparently the pollen of sycamore is indistinguishable from field maple. And so when they look at the pollen records by pulling out big soil cores, 
they are looking at this pollen and they're assuming it's field maple but who's to say it could be sycamore and there are some scientists that argue that um, however sycamore does tend to have quite an invasive habit and so where areas of woodland have been coppiced or areas have been cut or even areas like this like heathland um, sycamore can spread quite rapidly and very successfully because of its lovely helicopter seeds and um, it comes into leaf much more early than some of the native species and that can be a problem because it creates more shade earlier in the springtime and so the forest floor doesn't get enough light and that can lead to some of the woodland wildflowers not being able to grow there. So that, that's considered a problem by, by some in terms of woodland management. Um, there's also the argument that sycamore doesn't host um, the same sort of number of species as some of our native trees. Um, however, people do argue there is still wildlife value to sycamore trees because although it might not have a number of different species, the species that it does attract it has in high numbers. So for example, it's particularly popular with aphids. Um, they, they love the uh, sap of the sycamore tree and uh, you may have noticed that if you've ever parked your car under a sycamore tree in the spring and the summer or kind of like the uh, the honeydew that the aphids produce often drips down onto your car and it's a great pig to get off um, that's coming from little tiny insects um, so it's got a high volume of the small number of species which of course are food for lots of other species so it still does have wildlife value in terms of biomass. So I just wanted to round off with some thoughts around the properties and uses of sycamore because that might be handy for ideas to use at forest school. Um, firstly thinking about the wood itself so it's a medium density wood it splits reasonably well um, and I find it a lovely wood for carving it's a beautiful kind of golden colour it kind of got a nice golden shimmer to it it's really nice looking wood pale wood takes some um, stains well if you wanted to dye it as well um, and because sycamore is considered a pest species by some landowners it's also quite handy because they don't mind if people want to come and cut some down because they don't want it to grow there so it can be a really useful sustainable resource for your for your forest school it does coppice reasonably well and sends up some nice straight shoots if you need straight poles for shelter building or toasting sticks, things like that. But you will need to protect it well from grazing animals because, as I mentioned before, it's got a nice sweet sap that um, lots of animals like to eat. Talking about the sap, because it is a maple, you could tap the sap and you could taste the uh, the sweet sap for yourself um, you could even try and make maple syrup from it um, which you could do by collecting the sap and then distilling that down on the fire um, to make it get thicker and you could have it on your pancakes if you like which um, is nice traditionally of course it's usually the sugar maple from North America um, that would do that but any maple you could you could do that with it's just not quite as sweet as the sugar maple in the summer and autumn months, when the leaves are out on the sycamore, you might have noticed they sometimes get that fungal infection called tar spot, where the big black dots come on the leaves. So that can be used to our advantage if we're looking at, say, number games or playing dominoes or kind of snap, you know, that sort of game could be played with those. And of course, with the helicopter seeds, we could do all sorts of things like races, you know, see whose helicopter can go the furthest. Um, you could also use them for natural collage. They make great eyes and eyebrows on tree spirits, you know, the mud faces on, on tree trunks or mud monsters, little clay creatures. Um, or my particular favorite is to become a rhinoceros. This might not work because it's a, a dead one, but you, you get a seed and you open it up. <laughs> It's not working. It's not working. Yeah. Yes, you can become a rhinoceros. Yeah. <laughs> Sycamore with buds big and green is not native, but often seen. It spreads itself with helicopter seeds. Lovely wood to carve. We can thank sycamore trees. Oh.